So, we are the front. Hi. Hi. Um, we are the Paso marketing team for the Ministry of the Tourism in Switzerland. So, we're here tonight sending to you how we can evolve to to help boost the, the tourism. So, Basel is the, uh, the third largest city uh, of Switzerland. It's located in the in the northwest of Switzerland on the Little Rhine. And uh, it's famous for its cultural diversity. And it has a lot of art museums and uh, a lot of theaters. And Basel also features uh, uh, functions as a, a major industrial uh, uh, center for the chemical and pharmaceutical uh, industry. And it's also a very important, important transportation hub as well. So we hear uh, our plan is to use social media uh, to boost American, American tourism in 2015. And because we know the um, American tourism um, has been flat for, for the last five years, and uh, we also know that people are very reliant on, on the words of mouth and uh, social media to uh, determine their next destination. And um, this is exactly our opportunity to use social media to, uh, to um, enhance battle as a, a more, more modern and exciting, exciting destination for them. And uh, here is the summary for, uh, for Basel's uh, current, uh, for the last current social media spirit. And it's one dimensional and it serves as a centralized uh, forum for major events, events announcements. It also mostly used by the nations, but uh, they lack of um, <coughs> personality. The tune of the content are very unattractive to other other tourists. And so the objective: <coughs> transform the social media platform to a multinational platform. Right now, as as my colleague mentioned, we're too myopic. So we need to inject humanity identify the American tourist target audience and create content. Content that's relevant, that's human, that's personal, and what they want to enjoy and, and trigger this excitement of going to Basel in 2015. So through research, we've identified three target segments. We have Mia and Leon, couple. They are in their late 40s, early 50s. They travel. They travel a lot, but they're tired of Disneyland. They're tired of Cancun. They want time to themselves, and they want to go to Europe and enjoy a sophisticated city. After all, they're foodies. <coughs> Nick. Nick is your <coughs> typical male artist, tech guy. He um, he loves to travel. That's where he gets his inspiration. He's been to Basel, uh, Art Basel in Miami, and now he wants to see the real thing. Then we have Alina and Julia. Alina and Julia are besties, and we know that women tend to travel together as a couple. Um, they travel. They want to experience. They've done the Milan, the London, Paris. What is the next big big thing? So. These are your three. They're trendsetters. They're affluent. How are we going to capture their attention? <coughs> How do you Basel? So that's our creative strategy. How I Basel. How I Basel is going to be the new platform where these, these target audiences are going to write in their own words their experiences about all the different events that Basel has to offer. The icon. The icon. Typical marketing thing. But we think it's going to work. We want to present to you the San Bernard. San Bernard is the national dog of Switzerland. What better way? Let's transform Mia and Leon, Alina and Julia, Nick, into the San Bernard. 
they will be the ones talking on Facebook, on Twitter, on all the other platforms my colleagues are going to take you through. Okay, so we're going to get to know these guys a little bit better. So this is Mia and Leon. They've been married for 25 years. So they've been going on family vacations, and they're, like, sick of it. They just want to go enjoy themselves. So they hear, they've been to all the destinations, but they finally discovered Basel. So it's somewhere that they would love to go. It's romantic. It's quaint. It's no, low stress. So, And the next one is Nick. He's... He considers himself a world citizen, which means that he loves to, to see the world and is inspired by different sites. So, Basel is his new discovery, and he wants to share with us his journey. So, and this is Amina and Julia. They've been best friends since preschool, and they love fashion and travel, and that's what inspires them to keep going to different destinations together. So. Okay, so, and how are we going to do that? Um, so, our new approach will be to intrigue our audiences, engage, and target them more effectively because we think by introducing these characters, people will identify as a lot of people like dogs and they all have different personalities. So, we think by this, doing this kind of approach, we will uh, engage them better. So, we will be posting intriguing headlines, <coughs> visually appealing uh, pictures and content that our characters are going to be. Uh, uploading on the different channels, which I'll introduce later, and also uh, our content will be our content will be very, very targeting, so um, it will be very relevant to our fans because we'll make sure we um, know what they like, um, and also we'll try to engage in a real time uh, content <coughs> by um, kind of following the events and battles, and also kind of trying to uh, engage our audience uh, during those times. So. Um, so here we have the, uh, the two, we divided our channels in two types, written and visual. Written, we'll use Facebook, Twitter, and WordPress to uh, build the community and fans. And through that, uh, we will, through Facebook, we'll try to find um, um, advocates and who will share the travel. And so our characters will be like advocates for, for Basel, which will be sharing their experiences. Um, and Twitter will be more real-time kind of, um, channel. Uh, WordPress, very important for travel experiences, is a lot of people actually go to blogs and read about different people's experiences there. So we'll use WordPress where we have uh, post um, long-term content, which will be also kind of like easy to search when people search for their next destination. So they will be stumbling upon our characters. Uh, and um, for visual, we have um, Instagram and um, Pinterest, where people can actually pin their um, and make their um, vacation folders. Um, and we divided our um, our channel strategy of how do we bezel into these channels. Um, as um, for our kind of uh, platform, we think that tourist experiences is the most kind of um, important one, where people will be most looking after. So we'll be devoting 35% of our post to that. And um, we'll use um, Facebook, uh, as I mentioned, with Twitter and WordPress. Uh, events and promotions, we'll use um, Facebook and Twitter. And um, tourism support will be more like uh, we'll be um, providing uh, tourists with like, access to questions from anything like lodging to um, you know if they have any kind of um, question on the real-time events happening, such as um, uh, festivals or um, different kind of trade shows, um, and also <coughs> lifestyle content. Uh, as you see, we'll be using, as I mentioned earlier, um, the visual channels, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, and also uh, WordPress, very important for our purposes. And uh, we'll engage our audiences in uh, uh, during Basel World Festival and uh, uh, Swiss National Day with the real-time content, which our characters will be posting, how they are having fun and what they're experiencing. And, and that will it, hopefully, this will drive our audiences to want to know more and hopefully book their vacation. So. OK, so here are some mock-ups of um, the different characters in, on the social media channels. So first up is uh, Mia and Leon. So right here, like we try to romanticize it a little and try to do it based on what couples might like to do. So like over there for Instagram, we have 
them walk, uh, having a romantic walk on the Rhine, go into the zoo, like getting chocolate, and um, and going to see like Roger Federer play tennis match at the Swiss indoors. And then next is Nick. So we try to make it a little bit more cultural, more art based, and even a little bit more explorer. So like here we have exploring different museums in Basel and uh, getting coffee on the Rhine. And here he's uh, exploring by going snowboarding on the, the Swiss Alps. And then Alina and Julia, we try to make it more fashion focused and um, amongst other events too and even different sites. So, so. Okay. Okay, here. Content frequency here. As you see in the chart, we have every day posts on Facebook and a few times on Twitter every day, and also uh, not that much for the World Pride because in the World Pride we are going to post the long form content, so which is twice a week, and then some also a few times on the Twitter, on, uh, uh, sorry not Twitter, the Pinterest and the Instagram just for the photos to in engage people, and sorry, yeah. And one thing is that is that, uh, we, we know that people are usually to uh, search for their next uh, traveling place on the evening or the weekend because they are most probably not to do this in their work. And uh, we understand that, so that's why a lot of our posts are posted in the pre evening or there. And the other uh, interesting thing you may find in this chart is that the time over here is a little earlier, one hour to two hours earlier than the people uh, when. Uh, then the people who are uh, when they are regularly on the on the platform, it's one hour, two hours forward. The reason why we put it in that way is that the time showing here is the west coast time. We also want to cover the people who are in the east coast, in the east coast. So that's why we just put it in the middle and to balance the people in these two areas. Okay, for the success measurement, we are going to mirror the uh, success in this four aspects. And the first one is the publishing uh, coordinate and the management of the, of the uh, publishing contents that uh, mentioned previously on to, to the multiple platform. And also provide the content, content approval precise and the results, all the resources in our, our content, content center. And the second thing is that listen. We would like to listen to our audience, what, uh, what, what they say, what they are talking about, what they are really interested, interested in, and also give them, their, uh, give, give them our feedback to their questions of just uh, uh, both the negative or, uh, negative or positive <coughs> we, we want to, We do not want to them to feel like they are not, uh, they are not responding, they are responding to them. Okay, and the, for the analysis part, we have some numbers which are for the uh, to mirror the rich engagement and also the real conversion rate, which means that people can click click uh, to uh, to our redirecting to our website from the posting. It's the real conversion conversion rate here. And for the manager, and the last part is the manage, management that we like to manage the content production chain. And also the approval things over there, and also manage our vendors and our third-party licensed uh, uh, content, licensed content provider, and to keep us moving. So we've talked a lot about what we want to do and what channels we're going to use and what we want to assess. So I get the boring bit of telling you some of the logistics of how we're going to do it. So starting with managing that kind of um, strategy, we've got to talk about which platforms we're going to use to do this and why. So um, we're actually going to go with four relatively straightforward or basic platforms in year one because we're not a multinational company or a small tourist board. Um, and those are going to kind of tackle the different things we need to assess and use moving forward. So first of all, we're going to use Sprinkler as kind of a combined kind of platform for posting because it works well with WordPress, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, we're actually going to post generally directly onto Pinterest and Instagram because some of the visual platforms are difficult to kind of integrate. Um, and we went with Sprinkler because we can post directly through that, but also it has an analytical tool which allows us to kind of assess how things are going, click through rates, and all of that analytical stuff we're going to need for performance. Um, we actually chose Sprinkler for everything as a combined approach because it's kind of cost effective initially. If things go well in later years, we were thinking about something like Heat Poll for demographics or Trigger Tracks, um, but we thought this was a good kind of start of the year one. 
Um, aside from Sprinkler, we thought we need a separate tool where we can, and Sprinkler is going to be the content we're pushing out once it's approved and measuring kind of feedback. We thought we needed a second tool where we could kind of plan and brainstorm as a team and kind of work with the marketing team and other kind of offshoots from the tourist board or our vendors. So for that, we're going to use Yammer. Um, we thought that would be kind of like just our internal brainstorming platform. Um, as we're kind of trying to build this community, we're going to have some quizzes, we're going to try and get advocates, we're going to kind of work with our community as it grows. So we want to integrate some kind of like um, advocate board or kind of quiz function. For that, we're going to use Face Course because it integrates well into the platform. Um, and finally, in year one, we need some kind of search engine opti optimization tool, so we chose Yoast. It's one of the easy ones to use, and it has a plugin for WordPress, which is going to be our main blog post. So those are the platforms. Now I'm going to talk about the people we need to do this. So our center of excellence is going to be five people. We're going to hire a community manager who's kind of like overseeing everything, and then we're either going to hire or move around the existing staff we have to kind of fill out the different roles. So community manager is going to be important for kind of the overall strategy, coordinating, approving, responding to any kind of customer or kind of um, traveler comments, and they'll liaise with kind of some of the other teams. Content strategy is going to be maintaining, strategists are going to be maintaining the calendar. Creative ed editor is going to be overseeing the creative or graphic content. Channel editor is going to be overseeing the written content largely, and everyone's working together. And then we're going to have an analyst who's going to be overworked, measuring how all of this is working. And the final thing I wanted to kind of talk about are the initial logistics are kind of like the timeline. We're planning to launch this in 2015, um, so we've got a lot to do before then. We need to get our, hire our community manager. We need to get the CV team together. We've got to pick, purchase the software, train. We thought it was worthwhile going and interviewing stakeholders, so people that already work on Tourism Basel, people who have been to Basel, and also catalog all the previous content that's been used, because while it's one-dimensional, it might be a resource we can go to when we need to put, push more stuff out. Um, we're going to finalize the process and approval chain so that we can actually move quickly and do some of this real time stuff we want to do. And then finally, we have to have the launch content ready to go ahead of launch so we can start pushing stuff out. And we have a few weeks worth of calendars to be going. So that will take us through to the start of 2015, which is when we launch. And this is when we're going to have to have weekly reviews, content adjustments, quarterly um, strategy reviews to make sure it's working. But really, 